Hi, welcome. My name is Reverend Tony Tona. I want to thank you for allowing me to come into your homes today. What my sermon's going to be about is my story or testimony. I've been talking about myself on and off through different videos for the last nine years, if not longer, about my life. But I'm kind of putting it together just like I put it in the book. And the book is uh, called Work in the Front Lines, Life on the Streets. Um, it's about my life from the age of about 17, 16 years old. It doesn't say everything about my life. It just, to me, the important parts, what got me to this point in time. I was born and raised in Brooklyn as a Catholic in New York City in the 40s and 50s. Just running the streets, doing wild and crazy things. Breaking into homes, uh, stealing cars, just doing some bad things, and which of course I'm ashamed of today, but God's forgiven me for all that. As the years passed, I was married, had two children, son and a daughter. Also operated and owned a security company. I was a security director at a couple of different corporations out of New York and Brooklyn. Moved to Maryland. Uh, I was a security uh, director for a company down here in the state of Maryland. Um, opened my own business eventually. Became a security consultant. We did a lot of different work for the people in the, the, the state of Maryland. We, we had security guards armed, worked for the government in D.C. I must had about 40, 50 government uh, uh, security officers in the city of, uh, well, actually in D.C. and uh, protecting different buildings down there for a number of years. Did a lot of different other work, industrial espionage work and stuff like that. <clears throat> Going through a divorce, um, again, raised as a Catholic, didn't know God up until this point. In 1983, the Lord came into my life, completely changed my life. Now, how it happened, I was living on an island, on Ken Island, in the, in the eastern shore of Maryland. It was actually on a point. And I was reading this track that someone gave me from Florida when I was visiting my parents down there. And they were Catholic. And um, so I was reading this track. It was a hot, hot, humid night, and the fan was on. I can picture it right now. And the track said that I was a sinner. And I saw these big words in front of me that said sin. I wasn't looking at the track then, just just appeared in front of me, and I felt something just sucked out of me. Well, that night I was born again not knowing what happened to me because I don't believe the Catholic religion teaches that. Uh, I, I never heard it. And um, so a day or two later, I, I was walking in the back of this yard uh, where I was living, and I met this, this person back there. And he was a young guy, maybe in his 30s, maybe 35, uh, white male, and we started talking. He was a Mennonite. And uh, we became friends, and he told me I was born again that night. Um, I didn't have a Bible at the time, so I gave him some money. He went out and bought me this particular Bible that I have right now. And um, we started having Bible studies in his apartment. And my life just started to change. Unbelievable change. And I knew something was going on. We started going to church. He took me to this Mennonite church in Maryland and uh, became real friendly with them. But when I first walked into the building, what, what took me by surprise, which was really unbelievable, was the way that people looked. I, I, there was just a brightness about the building, inside the building. The people were so bright and, and they looked like they were glowing. And that really just turned me on. I knew that these people were different. The building wasn't fancy. It was a humble looking building. Um, the women looked so pure and honest. 
was on, c compared to the women that I used, used to be with and the ones that I see on TV and all this other stuff, unbelievable. They were pure. And uh, I started to grow. We went to the, probably to this church maybe a couple of times. Me and the Mennonite, and I brought a friend with me. Um, and eventually, uh, we kind of broke off uh, the Mennonite. I believe his name was Tom. I mentioned it in the book. He, he moved away. He came in uh, as a shock to me. He moved out. Within a couple of months, he was gone. I say he was my angel that God had there for me. Uh, he, was, uh, he was in disguise. So I started to get strong, started going to another church, another born-again church of believers, started to grow with those people. And I started to notice things weren't exactly lining up with the Gospels. I started to see that I would read the Gospels. Give you an idea. Well, let me start off reading about the salvation that I went through. And that's in John 3 to 7. John 3, chapter 3, 3 to 7. Uh, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly I said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? And Jesus answered, Truly I said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. So that's what happened to me that night. Now just to confirm that with scripture, I'm going to back it up and go to Romans. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Well, those scripture verses became a part of me. I kept reading them every day, five and ten and six. 20 times a day I would read these scripture verses. And I, I got it so, it, it birthed it in my spirit. And I started to grow on these scripture verses. And really, truly knew that something happened to me and I was born again and I was linked up to God. Okay, And no one was going to take that away from me. And anybody tried to change my mind, I wasn't going to change. Okay, That's where I was. Let me keep reading. Lost my business eventually and got a job working construction. Rough, rough bunch of people. And that's when I started to uh, get involved with, with guys that are on drugs, or guys that were homeless, guys that had problems, um, in and out of jail. And I started preaching to them. And uh, I bailed a guy out of jail one time because a group of men came over to me and said, Tony, could you help me out? We got to get, one of our buddies is in jail. Could you bail him out? So I got raised the money and I, and I got him out of jail. And that's what really kind of opened the door for me. But I also, as the years and days went on, uh, I, I, I ran into a guy one day. Uh, his name was Willie. I was driving along the street. I had a Volkswagen bug that's on the cover of the book. And I ran into this guy, Willie. Now, he was a hermit, not knowing it at the time. And, and his pants on both sides of the seams were ripped. And they were pinned together. So he'd be walking like this through the street, okay, because those pins, I guess, were sticking into him. And uh, so I picked him up, and I, I asked him if he needed any help. He told me where he was living, and his dilapidated house was deteriorated. So I wound up uh, getting him uh, food. Uh, uh, I got him a new pair of pants. I invited him to my house, kind of speeding these stories up because I don't have the time to finish this all. He became a friend. Uh, he never took a bath, never washed himself. Uh, in years, he would use the, the hose next door at this person's house because the, the place he was living in had no water, uh, no electricity, no refrigeration, uh, no stove to cook on. So he'd go next door. He, if he had to go to the bathroom, he'd leave himself in a bucket and throw it out in the woods. 
That was Willie. Okay, uh, worked with him for years, eventually passed away, and uh, I think he was about 60-something years old. So here I am, you know, working with Willie. Then one day I was reading the paper, and there was an article about this woman that was homeless, sleeping in this rusted car with a, with a, with a little child, maybe about six or eight years old at the time, a uh, black lady. And um, so I, I waited for maybe the, uh, the churches would kind of go get her and help her out. Nobody, nobody even bothered with her. I went down about two, three days later, talked to her, found her, uh, put her in a motel, Try to help her out. She was a drug addict. Uh, she had the baby. Uh, I think at the time, I'm not sure. She, it was a little girl at the time. Uh, he, she was about uh, maybe again. Uh, I'm not sure at the age, but the baby. She became pregnant. I think she said she was 13 years old. So you know, my things started to change for me. I started to really read the Bible. I was getting at the different scripture verses. Well, the greatest commandment, Matthew 22, 35. Let me go over there real quick. I know I've mentioned this many times to you, which is to me the greatest, uh, the greatest commandment is to love God and love your neighbor. And I'm going to read 22, Matthew 22, 36. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? This person is asking Jesus, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, Jesus answering, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So the whole law of the Bible here depends on these commandments. To love God with all your mind and your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm reading these scriptures, and I'm saying to myself, gee, nothing's going on. You know, this church isn't doing anything, or the churches aren't doing anything. So that's kind of encouraged me to keep going. Got another scripture. Uh, let's go to Philippians. I want to go to Philippians 2, verse 3. Listen to this. It says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. Now today, today that's, that's not happening. Okay. He said, let each one regard the other person more important than you. Do you really do that? Do you all really concerned about your your other person, about uh, treating him well and, and uh, taking care of him when he has a problem and visiting with them. Are you treating, are we treating as church body the other person more important than ourselves? That's not going on today. It's not, gonna even, it's not going on in the church. I see it. I've been operating this word over, over close to 30 years and I see it. Let me keep going. Don't, do not merely look out for your own personal interest. That's number four. Do not merely look out for, for your own personal interest, but also the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which, also, which was also in Christ Jesus. He wants us to have the same attitude, just like Christ Jesus. So, you know, when I'm reading these scripture verses and all this stuff is happening to me, it just shocked me that the church wasn't following through. I lived in a cabin. Now, this cabin, kind of like Willie's, uh, was on this 10, 11 acre property. Uh, there was a main house and a cabin. And this cabin, uh, when I first moved in, it, had, it has no electricity. Well, it had electricity, I'm sorry, but it had no water, had no bathroom, had no kitchen, no stove, no nothing. The only thing it had was a phone. It's a storage house. It had a lot of furniture in there and different things that belonged to the people that owned the house and the property. Wound up living there for eight years. And God really taught me what was going on. Uh, really got close to God. 
Um, eventually, uh, we fix it up a little bit on the inside. I got myself a bed because in the beginning I was sleeping on a couch that was in there. Um, got myself a little high plate with one burner. Uh, had a cooler. Uh, there was a spigot outside. Bought a porta potty that they use on boats and used that. If I wanted to take a shower, I went next door to the main house, walked up the back stairway into the shower, uh, washed my clothes, went into the basement of that house and washed my clothes out of washer and dryer in there. So I was really um, hoofing it, to put it that way. I was really keeping my strength and faith in the Lord. Uh, I grew, and I could feel myself growing. Uh, driving around in my little Volkswagen bug that, uh, that I bought. Again, it's in my book. You know, if there's anybody out there that's suffering today with drugs, alcohol, homelessness, poverty, or any problem that you might have, okay, the answers are here. They're in the Bible. The answers are in the Bible, absolutely. The book, the book is free. I don't charge anybody for the book. You want to download it, just go to my website. I've said that many times. But of course, you know, being on television for the last uh, nine years, let's say, um, I'm broadcasting right now internationally. A lot of people don't know that. I'm broadcasting in the, in the United States and also internationally. And so there's other people that haven't heard these tapes, and I'm kind of renewing their mind by going over my relationship with God and when, how I got saved and when I got saved. And I hope this is going to benefit other people. So I lived in this cabin, no water, uh, no running water except for the spigot outside. I go out there, snow, a couple of feet high, and I'm brushing my teeth in the spigot. It's freezing, but it was really great. It was refreshing. Trust me, it was refreshing. Uh, gave me a lot of time to read my Bible. Uh, there's a scripture verse I want to read here. Uh, Matthew 25. Let's go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 40. See, these people that I was helping were the least of them. Okay. That's what God was showing me. And these are some of the scripture verses that I'm giving you, the ones that I received way in the beginning, almost 30 years ago. So he says, And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even to the least of them, you've done it unto me. So when I was helping those people, they, they were the least according to God. And I was doing it also unto God. And boy, that made you feel great. And it still makes me feel great today that I'm, I'm doing, doing the word, I'm working in the word, I'm walking in the word. Uh, and, and that's what got me attached to uh, more and more each day, each day by the hour to God, and I became stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, Luke 14, let's go to Luke 14. Just got some scripture verses that, and it's not only my life story, it's the story of, uh, of these other people, uh, men and women that I've helped through the years. Luke 14. Luke 14, 13. We actually, we actually did this. But when you give a reception, invite the poor, crippled, lame, the blind, and you will be blessed since they do not have a means to repay you or will be repaid, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now, so when I was taking these people to the house, now we had, I didn't take them to the cabin. We took them to the main house. When the, <laughs> when the parents left, when this guy, Skip, who was helping me at that one time, he hasn't helped me in a number of years since, uh, but that one time he was helping me out and I was living in the cabin, we invited these poor, lame people, the homeless, we invited them to, the, to this main house and we had them all sitting around in the dining room uh, in this beautiful historic home, you know, big hand-hewn ceilings, uh, beams running across, fireplace. We had these poor people in there, and we, we served them dinner. So we, we did exactly what the Lord was telling us to do, and we, I've been carrying that on for years. Has anybody ever done that in your church? Or has your pastor ever done that? 
And I don't mean to put anybody down. What I'm, what I'm, tr I'm trying to stir up your heart and your mind to see that there are other scriptures out here that we're not talking about and we're not preaching about. And that's those, those, are, the main, those are the ones that are, are close to God's heart is the least of them because he mentions it in his word. Okay. Romans, uh, Romans 12. Let's go back to Romans. Don't mind me hopping around here a little bit. Just checking to see. Romans 12. Romans 11. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. So what I was doing, I was reaching out in love. Okay. Showing these poor, hopeless, and homeless people that, that God cared for them and God was working through me and the love was coming from me to them through God and showing them that I cared for them and God loves them. And some of those men and women have changed today. And that's because of a lot of my, the early days of me working out there and getting to know these people and and helping them out when they had problems and paying rents and working with them. And if they had a water bill to, to pay off or they were being evicted from a house, I would, I would step in and try to help them. Then there was another situation. Uh, well, let's, go to, let's go to one more. Galatians 6, very important scripture verse. Galatians 6. You wouldn't believe that I have a lot of scripture verses Regarding my, my life, uh, Galatians 6, 2, powerful, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens and thus to fulfill the law of Christ. You want to you wanna fulfill the law of Christ? I'm telling you, bear one another's burdens. Don't go burden. Don't you, you can go help somebody that you know, someone that's clean, uh, someone that's a relative or someone that's a friend of yours that needs help. But he wants you to bear the burdens of the least of them. Okay, he's saying bear one of his burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Now, one of the reasons I believe, and I, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but that's okay because I'm preaching the message from God, is that you know the church doesn't want to get their hands dirty. I'm sorry to say that. that that's where it's coming from. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They want, to, they want to work with the ones that are clean, the ones that are, you know, got to clean clothes on, uh, the ones that go to church. You know, wasn't, wasn't, Jesus, wasn't Jesus out in the street? Wasn't Jesus out in the street? Wasn't Paul out in the street? What, weren't the apostles, disciples out in the street working with the poor people and the homeless people. That's where he was. Now, he, he tells us to imitate him. Paul tells us to imitate him. Are we really imitating what they're doing? We need to change things around. People starving all over the world. There's billions of people, billions, B, B, billions, living on $2 a day. There's close to 49 million just alone in the U.S. that are suffering. We need to get out there. So again, all this together opened my eyes for what was going on. I worked with a lady uh, that was involved with drugs for many, many years. Uh, she had two of her children shot and killed uh, within a couple of years. Well, actually three or four years apart from each other. She was a heroin addict. Eventually, she changed her life around. She had got into her life. She changed her life around. I mean, there's a lot of suffering going out there. Buck, a heroin addict, okay, for many years. Matter of fact, I used to help him out and go to the apartment where he was living. There was a shootout in that place. 
It's to be a crack house. Three police officers were shot and wounded. One seriously. So these areas that I went to were dangerous. But God protected me. God always protected me. Joe and Vicky, another pair. Uh, eventually, I was working with this guy for Joe for, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. Met him in a, in a, in a thrift store. I had no money to buy a pair of pants. Just got released from jail. Started to work with him. Started to get his life turned around. Helped to get a job. I mean, there's so many stories that go on and on and on. It'll open your eyes. It's opened my eyes. I got people today calling me up on the phone crying because they got a hold of my book. Now, again, you can't, you can't get it in any bookstore. You could download it off my website. And I'll tell you another thing. Several other uh, publishers, e-book publishers, are carrying my book. There must be at least three or four, if not five of them, that are carrying my book right now. I never asked them, but they're carrying my book. And you can get in and read it. It'll open up your eyes and your heart and things will change for you. Uh, I'm just running short of time. Uh, just ran the streets. Lived on the streets of Manhattan for, for three, uh, actually 30 days, almost a month. That was, that was a great story. Uh, it's in my book. Again, I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm not trying to make any money off the book because I'm not making any money. And the money, there's no sponsors of this book. I laid this money out myself. I purchased this book myself. People help me, not with money, help me prepare the book. But things uh, time is running short, and, and i got to end here. Um, one other thing, the Bible teaches us to forgive your brother 70 times 7, and that's in uh, Matthew 18, 21, 22. It says, forgive your brother 70 times 7, that's 490 times. Think about that. I have to say a prayer. Anybody out there that wants to receive Christ, just come to the screen or just stand where you are if you can hear me. Just repeat this prayer after me and truly mean it and your life will change. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me of my sins because I know I've been a sinner. I know your son Jesus died on the cross for me and the power of God raised him from the dead. Lord, come into my heart and save me. Give me wisdom and guidance in my life. Help me, Lord. Guide me, direct me into all righteousness and honesty. Gird me up, Lord. Make me strong so I could go out there and witness and uplift the kingdom of heaven and your name. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for my salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a safe week or a safe day. And thank you again. Amen.